Just wanted to request Chris to stay on the stage and to invite Viral. Uh, we're going to have our sponsor talks now. So first, let's welcome Julia Hub, our platinum sponsor. Chris has many different jackets, uh, depending on which role he's playing. Um, so while Chris uh, sets up the demo, um, well, you know, for a sponsor talk, uh, I just wanted to very quickly, um, you know, update everyone on where we are uh, at Julia Hub. We are now about uh, 100 strong. We just, uh, you know, are a 100 strong company. And one of the things that, uh, one of the things that, you know, happened over the course of the years is that you, you've seen this transition where we started out, you know, with a focus on Julia and 1.0 and, uh, you know, building things like automatic differentiation and key technologies and trying to convince everyone in the world that, hey, this is an amazing language. You can build all these amazing modeling and simulation tools and machine learning tools and whatnot. And then we kind of got tired of waiting for people to do that. And we said, you know what, this is a great opportunity. We're just going to be greedy and do it all ourselves. And that's what has sort of led to the growth of the company. Um, and, and, and that's one of the demos that Chris is going to show. But if you're, uh, you know, if you're curious and interested about what Julia Hub as a platform is doing, go find Stefan. Uh, we have a Cedar Circuit Simulator that Keno is building. And uh, Keno might be somewhere in the audience, but you all know how to find him. And uh, without further ado, I'll hand over to Chris to talk about Julia Sim. Hello, I'm Chris Rokakis. You may have never met me before. I'm with uh, Julia Hub. And, uh, and uh, what I'm going to be talking about now is Julia Sim, transferring scientific machine learning to industry. So you, know, you might have heard of something called scientific machine learning, which is this whole platform that kind of gives you a nice way to mix scient uh, scientific models with machine learning. But the, you know, the people who talk about it are really talking to you know, mathematicians and software developers and PhDs. And not everyone in industry has a PhD in the math to be able to do all the steps. Right? So how do we make it so that way we can bring scientific machine learning to everyday engineers? This is what we're developing as Julia Sim. Right? So what, what Julia Sim is at, at a glance is, is doing all of these things that we want to do with scientific machine learning, but in a point and click GUI. We're not all the way there yet, but you know, I'll show you in a little bit. So, so what we want to do is be able to design models, make them run fast, use machine learning to discover the missing physics, calibrate these models to data to generate digital twins, and use it to control real devices, whether directly or through neural-based surrogates. So what does this then look like as a real thing? Well, here you go. Uh, let's pull this up to not auto. I want the 1080p here. Oh, there you go. So you get to see, we open this up as the app on Julia Hub, and now we're dragging in these components. These components are actually from a modeling toolkit library. By default, we have the modeling toolkit standard library here, but anyone who's building modeling toolkit libraries, like the folks who did the workshop yesterday, those uh, components that you're developing are actually compatible with this uh, GUI infrastructure that we're developing. So you can have your own components and add them to here. Right now, we would actually have to add them ourselves. But if you come talk to us, we're, we are building this, this platform in a way that is just using standard mod modeling toolkit models. And what we see here is we're developing this RC circuit, right? It's this a causal model of, a, of an electrical circuit. And it actually shows you the code that it's generating, right? We're, as we have this open source background, we like to show you the code when you want it. But if you just want to be simulating, here you can go into the simulator, you, ask, you tell it what you want to show the output of, and you click simulate, and it's running Julia under the hood on this cloud platform, you know, the Julia Hub cloud platform, that can then have as large machines and parallelism as it wants. Right, if you change around the parameters then, you're then able to see and play around with these models. So this is a very early version of the GUI. We're adding a lot more features as we go along. But what we want to show is that we can do some very difficult models. So here what we're doing is we're importing a battery pack model. This is a uh, four, four, uh, two by two battery pack, two serial, two parallel, uh, using the SPM, the single particle model. And this is something that someone would say, there was just four PDEs on the screen, all interconnected. And we just generate the equations from that 
and we were able to do this simulation. This is something that would generally require very special purpose software, but now we're able to do this in a way that is you know, not just specific to battery engineers, by using all of these things like, oh, this new Julia Sim compiler and some symbolic numerics you might have heard of. Right? We don't just have uh, things for, for, uh, for battery models, we also have a lot of models for HVAC systems, where these are being developed uh, in, in tandem with Mitsubishi Electric, where we have some very you know, intense two-phase flows interactions that are being able to be simulated uh, pretty simply using this cloud platform and this cloud GUI. So this, what we're showing here, you know, if, you if you don't know the, the details behind this, those models are way more complex than what this is, should, should be doing. They have a lot of this complex physics that is really baked under the hood here, and we just make it be accessible in this high-level graphical user interface. So what we've done with, with Julia Sim is we made it so that way, if you're a user, if you happen to be a user of Julia or SciML, how many Julia users are there in here? Raise your hand. Oh yeah, it looks like there's a lot of Julia users in here. So if you happen to be a Julia user and you build models in, in Julia, especially with Modeling Toolkit, then what we're able to do is we're able to take those models and give you extra functionality in a way that's easy. So if you want to do discovery of, of, of missing physics, if you want to do calibration, if you want to do control, all of these just take in the open source models as their input. So it's very easy as someone who's already using Julia to make use of these tools or to start from one of these HVAC or battery libraries. We're going into a lot of these areas and building out these, these industry grade uh, model libraries so that way if you want to get into that area, it's going to be very easy to, to get there. Um, now, one of the things that Julia Hub that we just released uh, this week is this local registry usage. So if you do want to make use of these tools, uh, say the Julia Sim compiler for accelerated modeling toolkit, the Julia Sim controls, or the Julia Sim model optimizer, you can install them locally, and they're free for academic use and for, and for non-commercial use. So you can make use of all these on your local laptop. And why might you want to make use of that? Well, because one thing is that the, we have a lot of controls libraries that can be used, for example, to control real-world devices and you know, be able to fly things around. So everyone has the question of, oh, can Julia be used for real-time control? Well, this is using Frederick's laptop, and uh, if you go over to the Julia Hub booth, you'll be able to play with something that is, uh, uh, you know, this kind of cart pull solution, this inverted double pendulum. You'll be able to play with it actually being controlled by a Julia program uh, using the Julia Sim controls. So, you know, it's always better when you go see it yourself, but this is something that you can, you can go do with your laptop by downloading these, these tools locally now. I want to I want to mention one last piece here, which is about what, this new piece that called the digital echo. So we have a new uh, new method for surrogates, where what you do is you just use a quick GUI to be able to select what parameters you'd want in a, in a random controller, and it uses that to automatically figure out what kind of data set it should generate. So it generates its own data set to then be able to train this surrogate in a way that is very accurate and predictive. Um, this is something where we haven't really shared the methodology yet. This is the first time we're describing it, but it tends to get very good results. And so the kind of showcase what this, what this looks like in practice. Oh, I want this 1080p. So what, the, what, this, what we're showing here is uh, this is the same, this is the same uh, simulation. The simulation is of the battery usage on a car that is driving from the Julia Hub headquarters to right here, so the Stata Center, well, the Stata Center for JuliaCon, right? On the left, this is the normal simulation running at its normal speed, and over on the right here, this is the surrogate model running. You can see the blue line is the difference, uh, the blue line is the original, the red line is the new one. So this is showing you the difference in the predicted current within the battery between the two models, right? One of them is running the surrogate, and so it's moving a lot faster. That is the speed at which you are, uh, the model is running in comparison to the original model. And so what, we're, what we've done is we've made it easy to be able to just automatically generate these kinds of ma machine learning models that are accurate predictions of how a simulator would work, but many, many, many times faster. And in the end here, then we have a lot of uh, these standard libraries coming. Uh, we, we're building out for, for batteries and, and multi-body systems and HVAC systems. There are a lot more that are coming for aerial vehicles, uh, process modeling, media and fluids. If you're interested in any other domains, please come talk to us. So, you know, we're building out these model libraries based off of the commercial partners we've been working with. If you want to be a commercial partner, come talk to us. Now, the last thing I want to kind of emphasize is that Julia Hub is growing into a marketplace of, of different apps, right? So, you know, you have uh, some of the Puma apps here, the, uh, just Julia running on the cloud, Julia Sim, but there's a whole marketplace that is growing from the Julia Hub platform. So here I want to I showcase, 
you know, this is one other app that is, that is running on the platform uh, for doing neuropsychopharmacology types of uh, simulations. You can drag and drop, build this kind of simulation. This is not a Julia Hub uh, a GUI, but this is a GUI that will be talked about at JuliaCon showcasing, um, you know, showcasing this kind of application where this is a partner that is added to our, to our uh, ecosystem. So if you're interested in you know, building out a new platform and trying to deploy with a lot of Julia code, Julia Hub can be a partner and you know, just come talk to us about, uh, if, about this growing marketplace. Right now it's on a case by case basis, but we are very interested in talking with developers. So, and, that, and that's why I wanted to share. So Ju uh, the Julia Hub is all about accelerating Julia developers, and Julia Sim is about democratizing scientific machine learning. You can try all these tools today. There is the Julia Hub free tier. If you go online, you can sign on, start playing with these apps. You can use the local installation and start playing with them on your computer as well. And you can check out our booth if you want more information. So thank you very much, again. <laughs>